Hey guys, today we're going to look at a very common kind of record player from the 70s, maybe the 70s and 80s, but it's a, a BSR turntable that was made for many different manufacturers of turntables uh, during the 70s and 80s, maybe even 60s, who knows, but uh, I grew up during the 70s, so I saw a lot of these as a kid, and uh, you know, if you weren't a serious audiophile, it was very common to end up with something like this. Now this particular one that you're looking at now is a Long Jeans Symphonette solid state stereo component turntable. And uh, it has uh, all your basic features of a turntable at that uh, time period. It has uh, four speeds. So we've got 16, 33, 45, and 78. And obviously uh, nowadays 33 and 45, just the two middle speeds, sometimes 78, ends up on a modern turntable, but not very often. Unless, of course, it's one of those ridiculous Jensen or uh, cheapo brand turntables. They put 78 on some of those. But then they don't give you a 78 RPM needle or stylus to play it back, which is kind of silly. As you can see here, this one has a flippable stylus. Right now it's on the 78 side, and when you flip it over to the other side, you get LP, or at least in this case, LPS. I'm thinking the S means sapphire, but I don't know for sure, or maybe it just means LPs, uh, uh, plural. Um, in any case, this is a fully automatic changer turntable which means you can stack your records here on this spindle and it will automatically play the entire stack and when it gets to the bottom of the stack it will complete its function it'll come over here to its resting place and shut off you can set the size of the records you can play 12 inch 10 inch or 7 inch records so you could stack a bunch of LPs on here, you could stack some 78s, you could stack a pile of 45s, as long as the 45 adapter, the little yellow adapter, was attached to each record. They did make spindles for these that was for 45s, and you could put that on there and stack your 45s directly onto a big round spindle. This one doesn't have that feature. Again, uh, on the front, we have our four basic controls. We have our volume, balance, treble and bass. Typically on turntables of this caliber you would just have a tone control not a bass and a treble. So it's always fun to have a little bit more uh, I don't know modification to your sound quality there with both bass and treble. It's almost like having a, a mini equalizer going on there. Hooked up to it I have these Yamaha speakers. These are pretty good. They're not the best in the world. These are NS AP2, what is that, 2800 BLE, and uh, I bought these off eBay. I had found a Yamaha speaker on, uh, at a Craigslist, or, I'm sorry, at a uh, Goodwill store, and uh, decided to get me some of these. It does have removable grills, so you can see uh, just what uh, caliber woofer and tweeter it has in them. So it's two-way, ported. Got these holes there for our base. Uh, they're pretty decent. So these, as you know, and, and not all Yamaha speakers, but a lot of them will give you a really good idea. They have a nice natural sound to them. So if the amplifier itself has its own tone quality to it, these speakers will pretty much show you what that sounds like. So these speakers are capable of some really high quality output for bookshelf speakers. And yet, what you're going to hear being played on this Long Jeans Symphonette is not going to be that great a quality. I don't think you're going to be blown away by the quality. So let's go ahead and put a record on and let you hear what it sounds like. Ironically, I know how to pronounce Long Jeans because I have this record. This is a cardboard record. It has uh, musical excerpts from the Long Jeans Symphonette and Corollers. I see, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Is it Cor Coraliers? Coraliers Treasury, containing a special personal message from Frank Knight. Special and personal. I think this is the dude right here. There he is. Hear what Frank Knight, world famous radio and TV host, has to say about the Long Jean Symphonette's new album. So apparently, this was a record company 
back then. Uh, looks like they partnered with Columbia. You can see Columbia Special Products there. Apparently, they uh, partnered with them to output a bunch of uh, record albums. Look at this. Extraordinary value. Not available in stores. Complete 10 record treasury of familiar favorites. Yours. For only $19.99. Comparable retail value as much as $49.80. $80. $49.80. So, let's throw that on there, hear what this cardboard record sounds like, and uh, you can tell me what you think. Ladies and gentlemen, the Long Jean Symphonette, playing the Long Jean Symphonette free demonstration record, which I had to pay for. Put it on manual, 33 RPM, and here we go. <laughs> Frank Knight speaking as I have for almost 30 years in behalf of the Long Jean Symphonette. And may I thank each of you personally for listening to our little demonstration record. Of course, this demonstration record is made of paper, and it can give only a very limited idea of how beautiful this truly rich harmony and moving music will sound when you audition, free and without obligation the complete Long Jean Symphonette and Coralier's Home Library. The songs you will hear are those you and thousands of our friends have requested most often as a result of our radio programs, TV programs, and our personal appearance concerts. Here's a favorite you're sure to remember. Sit back now, relax, and be transported for a few seconds to the year 1906. It was a time for romance, and George M. Cohan made the most of it. So there's nothing quite like listening to a church choir singing uh, some of your favorite old tunes. Now the unit got a little confused there and almost tried to go back and play a 12-inch record. In fact, it knew what I was going to do next. We were going to do a 12-inch record. Yes, when I get tired at the end of the day and come home and want to hear a good LP, I listen to the eight seasons of Chromalox. And now I'm going to play some of that for you because it's so awesome. Wasn't that just the most amazing thing you've ever heard? Okay, not really. So you can see by the size of the LP that's on here, this, this is a pretty small turntable. It's very compact in size. And it was probably aimed towards either a non-hi-fi, uh, non-audiophile, or even a kid. May have been the target audience of this particular record player. I did have to replace the stylus on it, so it does have a newer stylus. And it required a lot of oiling, and I'll show you where that oiling was required. Now, originally, when I found this at a resale shop, you couldn't even get that turntable off of there. It was so tight on there. The oil had pretty much become dried maple syrup, 
and I went in and put some Edison grease on it that I still have plenty of and I put some 3-in-1 oil in there as well. The, uh, the idler wheel still in good shape. Uh, unit has plenty of torque. I didn't check the speed but then again it's really hard to set the speed on these particular units at least with any accuracy. Sometimes you can move this screw right here and move the move the idler wheel up and down just slightly and that will adjust the speed but it's hit or miss really. Uh, this is the gear that is driven by a gear on the underside of the turntable which handles all of the automatic operation of the turntable. It's really interesting uh, when it when you here I'll watch what happens here see that little see this little bracket right here when I move this the the, uh, the tone arm in watch what happens to that thing see it move there so it moves in causes the turntable to grip a little uh, gear on this thing on this bracket which in turn makes this part start turning and when this part starts turning the tone arm starts doing its deal. It gets to the middle, it's a really tight one. See? And then it comes over and sets down. I can do it in reverse. Bring it back over. See there? Pretty clever uh, engineering, eh? All of your BC BSR turntables uh, have this mechanism inside of them. At least the ones that look like this, that have this fat tone arm. And there's a bunch of them that have a really skinny uh, cartridge on them like I don't know half of this width and the the stem for the tone arm is a like a silver tube I'm sure if you've seen a lot of turntables you'll know what I'm talking about referring to there but uh, in any case there's really just a no th no frills uh, setup here it has a built-in amp which did not require any capacitors to be replaced so obviously the circuitry that was put in it at the time uh, was good. It has a beautiful veneer finish on the outside, which is essentially compressed wood with a sticker glued to the outside to make it look like it's wood. But it's not really wood. Ugh, I'm sure you're disgusted. How horrible. This one's in pretty good shape, though. Um, it did not come with speakers. It did come with the dust cover, but I'm not showing you that because it looks awful. It looks like somebody uh, drug it behind their car uh, attached to a rope. So anyway, as far as removing the turntable, if you guys don't know what this part is, this is a uh, this is like a I forget what the actual term is, but this is the part that you that uses to tell the turntable if there's still something something on the stack. So. If this part gets all the way down to the bottom, the turntable knows, quote unquote, that it's done playing records and it will, it will quit, it will stop. So um, if you wanna see what that looks like, I'll show you. Put the turntable back on. I'll show you how you would stack a set of uh, records on here. As I pick up the record off the floor. All right, so you put it on the top there and then you move this little arm over and it holds it like that and let's get to a place where you can see it doing its magic you're gonna place this on a 12 inch size and you're gonna turn this not to manual or on but all the way up to reject the setting right here and watch what happens drops the record comes over and plays it kinda like kind of like a jukebox and then when you're done obviously when the needle gets towards the end you'll see it do its automatic return back to normal isn't that just totally cool dudes it's awesome and it shuts off so anyway that's really it guys the long jeans symphonette paired with some Longines Symphonet records, apparently, you would have had a Longines Symphonet kind of day, you know? It would have just be Longines everywhere, whoever Longines was. Maybe some of you could uh, fill us in on that. It looks like the, uh, the logo is like two dudes in front of some big drums right there. 
kind of cool. Anyway, thank you for watching. Run right out and get you one of these. It will probably work with a little oiling and a little bit of uh, refurbishing. No belts to replace. It has a, what they call a direct drive. Uh, no, it's not direct drive, is it? Is that what it's called? I forget what it's called. Anyway, I'm out of my mind. I'm having so much fun. Thank you for watching this video. Please share it with a friend and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have a question. And thanks for watching.